Today, I wanted to talk about psychic phenomena. So let me start by explaining what I mean. Now, as most of you know, those of you who've heard me speak before, you know that I believe that we are all connected. We're all facets of one consciousness. But at the same time, this consciousness isn't just us, physical beings um, and, and this planet. It's beyond, it's in, it includes, consciousness includes um, our deceased loved ones, our spiritual guides, um, ascended masters, and the whole of consciousness together is what I call God. Basically, it's the all-knowing, all-encompassing everything. So because we're all connected, many of us get messages and psychic hits, um, and that's why people go to see psychics and clairvoyants. At the same time, it is possible for us to use our free will and our mind and our determination to go against the guidance. The guidance isn't written in stone, but it is a connection and it is a guidance that keeps coming to us all the time. So let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about so you get what I mean. Um, one example is, and, and I'm talking mostly about people, deceased people, or uh, getting messages from the other side is part of it. Um, one, one day, about four years ago, um, a friend of mine was coming over to my home for, di for lunch. Um, her name is Jennifer McLean. And when she came over, she bought me this beautiful bouquet of orange roses. And she said to me, you have someone very powerful on the other side that told me to get the orange ones. Now at that time, my favorite color was orange and she had been reaching for the red roses, but she said the strong masculine voice said to her, get the orange ones, get the orange ones. And so she got the orange ones. And when she came over to my home, I said, oh my God, orange is my favorite color. I love orange anything, orange roses, orange purses. And um, she said, well, there's somebody looking out for you on the other side who told me to get the orange ones. Now, in that moment, I couldn't think of who it could be. And a part of me actually worried that have I just lost someone to the other side and I don't know who it is. And I started to think, no, I don't know of anyone who's passed away recently. So we sit down to lunch and literally while we're in the middle of lunch, I got a phone call from Wayne Dyer's manager, Maya, who said to me, who was crying on the phone, and she said, Wayne passed away this morning. Now, in that moment, I didn't put two and two together because I was just so shocked to get the news and I was distraught. Later on, I realized, oh, it was Wayne on the other side telling Jennifer, get the orange ones. And it was almost like a, a farewell gift, in a sense, from him. So I'm talking about things like that. It's that voice, that unmistakable voice she heard. Another story I heard from somebody else um, said some, uh, oh, and by the way, as I'm saying these, if you have your own stories of psychic phenomena, because I'm going to talk a little bit about how to be more open to them, what blocks them, but I would love for you in the comments to share your own stories about your psychic phenomena because what happens is that when people watching this video and then they read the comments, it kind of gives everybody permission to share if you share yours and it makes it more um, believable for anybody who's on the fence and who doesn't really believe. As they read it, they start to see, oh, okay, a lot of people are experiencing this. So I would love for you to share, and Danny's gonna pick a few which we're gonna punch up on the screen and read out to the audience. But here's another one that I thought was particularly good. One person wrote to me one day and he said that he was driving along um, at night, he was driving along the street at night and then he was heading towards a four-way intersection and the light was green for him in his favor. So because he saw the light was green as he was heading towards it, he speeded up because he wanted to catch that green light before it changed. As he speeded up, there was an unmistakable voice that said, stop, just stop. And so he halted to a screech at the green light at the intersection and sure enough, a, a huge semi truck just whizzed past across and that truck had run a red light. So if this guy had kept going at the speed he was going at picking up, 
um, his fate would have been sealed. He, he would not be here today to be telling us the story. And he knows somebody saved him that day. And he doesn't know, of course, who it was, but it was unmistakable. Um, so I get stories like this. I hear stories like this from time to time. Um, there was another one where a lady said she was awoken in the middle of the night. Uh, actually, no, she had a vivid dream in the middle of the night, a very vivid dream of her mother. Um, now, her mother lived on the other side of the country um, and was aging. And this, in this vivid dream, her mother looked beautiful and young and well and fit and healthy. And her mother said, don't worry about me. I'm fine. And so she woke up thinking, wow, that dream felt very real. And of course, I'm sure many of you guessed it. Her mother had just passed away and had come to her to tell her, don't worry about me. So I get stories, I hear stories like this all the time. And I want to just share with you some of the tips that I believe actually help us in being more open to having these kinds of things happen to us. So I actually sense these things happening even to me. They happen more often when I'm in a state of lightness or in a state of joy. Um, and so, or if I'm doing things that are mindless. So basically the mind has to be out of the way. The mind filters experiences and the mind tends to block experiences like this because the mind tends to be a little bit more um, uh, physical focused or focused in this, in this world of materialism that we live in and tends to kind of filter out anything that doesn't fit in with what we are engaged in right now. But when, when your mind drifts out of the way, then these interesting things can uh, actually start to happen. So for the guy who is driving, for example, when you're driving, your mind tends to drift, your mind tends to, um, uh, tends to wander because driving feels almost automatic. It's like doing something mindless. So there he is driving, picking up speed, and he hears this stop, stop. He's not doing something that requires a tremendous amount of focus. And of course, the dream is when somebody is asleep. You're not using your mind. Sleep is the best time to get these psychic hits happen to you. Um, when you're feeling in a state of, uh, of lightness and joy or when you uh, are basically lighthearted, when you're out in nature, when you are playing with your pets or your kids, things like that, that sort of thing. And you will get little hits, maybe small ones, sometimes small ones, sometimes big ones. Um, the kinds of things that prevent you from being so connected to everything, the all that is, and prevents you from getting psychic phenomena like that um, are things like too much stress in your life. Like stress just kind of bogs you down. It lowers your frequency. It makes it harder for the psychic phenomena and the, th and the things beyond the veil to actually penetrate through that denseness. So stress is one of them. Anger is another one. Fear is another one. So these are the things that kind of make your energy more dense. So these things are less likely to happen. If you are um, involved in a lot of drama with other people, relationship drama, um, things like that, that are making you feel really heavy. These sorts of things can really kind of bog you down and make it harder for these messages to come through. Now, these messages are actually trying to come through all the time. They're trying to find the gaps in your thought, which is why a lot of people recommend meditation. Now, uh, don't meditate if it stresses you out to meditate because that becomes counterproductive. You're meditating actually to de-stress, to lighten up and to clear your thoughts so that the other side can communicate with you. But for some people, um, they become stressed out when they can't make time to meditate and meditating becomes one of the things in their day that they kind of squeeze in or they believe they're not um, spiritual enough unless they meditate. Those are all the wrong reasons to meditate. Meditation is all it really is, is a gap between your thoughts so that you can listen. Meditation is listening. Praying is speaking. Meditation is listening. So it's a wonderful thing when you can clear the space in your mind to listen. Sit at the beach. 
um, listen to the waves. And when you're doing things like that, when you're sitting at the beach, when you're just lying there listening to the waves, when you're just people watching, when your mind drifts, that's when the messages come. Another thing that can also make it harder for messages to come through or psychic phenomena to, to take place or for you to get such hits um, is if your diet is extremely toxic. So uh, if you are eating a lot of foods that are high in chemicals or heavy metals or you're in an environment that is extremely polluted, like pollution in the air or in a high density living environment where everybody around you is stressed out and high strung, then it does become harder for you to get such messages. Because if you are someone who's open and super sensitive to messages, you end up picking up on the energies of everyone around you. You need to be in a, um, in a fairly clear state and place where you're not picking up on everybody else's energies. Because the minute you're open, you're sensitive to higher energies, the first thing that happens quite often is you're picking up on the denser energies that the people around you are holding. So be aware of that. You kind of want to be spend more time in a lower density, clearer space, less polluted, and maybe eat foods with less chemicals and toxins, and and be in a state where you can move your mind out of the way, either through meditation or joy or lightness. And these are the things that are really conducive for you to get more and more psychic phenomena. Um, it stands to reason, and, and this is not something that's researched, but just from my own experience, that I've noticed that people who live in high density cities that go to jobs they hate, uh, who feel a lot of stress, seem to be less guided than those who have joyful lives. So it's no coincidence that that's the case. Um, if you were courageous enough to move out of a high density city um, and you were courageous enough to kind of um, increase the, like the vibration or the vibrational frequency of your life by being away from dramas and stress and anger and things that are toxic to you and your energy and you start eating foods that are a little bit uh, less filled with chemicals and maybe more whole foods, um, it's no coincidence that actually you will start to feel more guided. Um, and I think that's really important to note because so many of you write to me and say you're in a job you hate and you're doing this and yet you're feeling that you, you feel like you're doing the work but it's not changing, your life is not changing. That's because you are in a frequency or in an area or in a part of your life and your mind is being stressed out by the goings on around you and by your job. It's preventing the messages from the other side and the psychic hits from coming through. Um, so what I want to do now is I just want to, um, I want to turn to Boo and I want to ask him, have you had any interesting stories come in? Interesting is an understatement. I wow. like that. Well, I like to hear that. I've got a couple of these queued up and let's see if technology will allow us to push Great. it up on we'll screen Great. We'll punch it up you. on the screen and I will read them out. And this is fantastic. This is exactly what I wanted you guys to do is to write these in so we can share them. Um, Emma Malik, so thank you for writing in. I was giving someone Reiki when a very gruff woman kept insisting, tell her I love her. It was very insistent. So I asked her about her mother she, and she had died. I told her about the message and she flung her arms around me and said she, did not know, she didn't know that and it shifted her massively. How amazing. See, I love things like that. Thank you, Emma, for sharing that. Totally thank you. You totally saw her mother there. And let's see if there's a couple more. Love it. When, so when you are going through things like, so if you are a healer, now um, this triggers, so before we get into another one, since Emma is a Reiki healer, I want to say that if you are someone who is a healer um, and you're working with people, it's even more important for you that when you're healing, that in order to get the best messages for them is to kind of be in that state of mind. It's to always be to choose a place to live and to practice from that is very conducive 
to de-stressing. So even if you are in a, in a spa or a practice in a high density city, make sure that when they come through the doors into your healing sanctuary or practice, that they are leaving their stresses behind. Make sure that your practice is insulated from the outside world and what it is that the people are going through. That's so important, whether it's through aromatherapy smells and whether it's through music and just calming colors, whatever it is, it's very important that you, um, that you cocoon your um, clients in this safe arena where all their stress and anger and fear can just get washed away. So thank you for sharing that, Emma. Uh, and when you do that, by the way, as a healer, you will get stronger hits. So I'm sure Emma does that, which is why she gets hits like that. So yes, we can go. Let's go for another one. Um, this one's Linda Coiler. My son had fallen asleep at the wheel and was drifting towards a semi truck and his deceased grandfather, my dad, yelled at him to wake up. Oh my God. See, I love that. That's so similar to the other one. He saved his life. Linda, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. That was beautiful. And thank you for his grandfather and so that your son is still alive. That must feel amazing. That's so you see, because he was like kind of falling asleep, he was at the right, um, kind of like his mind was out of the way. So his grandfather was able to tell him to wake up. That's a beautiful story. Do we have any more? Yes, we do. I love it. I love it. And, and I suggest all of you later after this video to go back and read the comments, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. Um, Marilena Zuniga, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, Marilena says, I can't believe the timing of this. I'm not on FB much these days because my dear father died seven weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I just came back from lunch with a friend who was dad's speech therapist in the hospital. We became good friends. And as she was cleaning out her, clearing out her office on retirement yesterday, she had a few cards and memorabilia that belonged to dad. I was feeling so sad because I hadn't heard from dad, but my friend did. And the words she heard loud and booming were give them to her. So she did just now at lunch. The cards had so much meaning to me and I've been in tears the last hour. And so I felt drawn to listen to your video right now. Thank you for another aff affirmation. Oh my gosh. See, and I actually think your dad told you to listen to this because he probably knew what I was going to be talking about. And so this is the thing. Um, one time, one person said to me that when you get messages from other people, how is it that these people um, know? So to give you an example, I'm just going to give you an example of something that happened to me, which I spoke about a few weeks ago when I was on the Alaskan cruise. Um, the, the, the stewards every evening, they would make, um, animal, an animal shape out of our towels and they would put it on our bed. And so one night they made the shape of an elephant. And interestingly in my, in my room, I had one of these unicorns, which someone had given to me on the cruise. Now, um, so, um, when I came into the room, the towel folded as an elephant was on my bed, but next to it was the unicorn. In other words, they had chosen to create an elephant and had chosen to pick up the unicorn from where it was on the side of the cabin and put it on the bed with the elephant. They had not put the unicorn beside um, any other animal on any other night. You know, there was a night when there was a monkey, a night when there was a turtle. They had not put the unicorn beside the animal on any other night. They only put the unicorn on the night that, um, that they had folded the elephant. And so we, for me, the elephant symbol symbolizes Wayne. I always think of Wayne as the scurvy elephant because he always shared a story about him being a scurvy elephant in the classroom. Um, that was one of his favorite stories. When he was a kid, his teacher called him a disturbing, elef uh, a disturbing element. 
and he went home and asked his mom what's a scurvy elephant and his mom went to the teacher and found out that his teacher had said disturbing element so the symbol of elephants come up for me as Wayne's presence now for me I love unicorns I kind of uh, I always joke about falling off my unicorn and stuff like that. So um, when there was the, um, the unicorn and the elephant on the bed, I told Milena, who was my assistant traveling with me, uh, about it. And she said, oh, that's you and Wayne together. That's a sign from Wayne. So now a question that people ask is, how did Wayne communicate to the to the people who made my room and who did that because does Wayne know them do they know Wayne do they how did they get the message so what happens sometimes is that our thoughts get played around with but we don't realize it we think it's our own thoughts so for example in this case um, you may have thought that you uh, you just happened to tune into this video or you decided today you had time to watch this video, but one of your deceased loved ones may have guided you to watch the video and dropped that thought in your mind, but you think it's your own thought because it's so subtle. And this is something that happens all the time. Our loved ones are guiding us even when we are not aware of it. And it's so subtle that we think it's our own thoughts. And so we are getting psychic phenomena and psychic guidance a lot more than we realize it. And they try to do that whenever our minds are clear. So let's go with another one. This is fun. I love hearing your stories. Just love it. And I'm sure everybody else does as well because it really confirms it for everyone. Dolores. Right after my dad passed in 2006, I dreamed of a red-tailed hawk on my fire escape window in Brooklyn, New York a day later. While sitting on my kitchen looking out the window, I was crying on the phone with a colleague telling her about my dream and about how I knew that was somehow related to my dad. And then I saw a red-tailed hawk right outside my window in Brooklyn, New York. Wow! amazing overwhelming feeling of love that is beautiful so while you're sitting in the kitchen while you're telling your colleague you see the red tail hawk hawk thank you for that dolores i'm sure it was it was your dad telling you he was okay um very recently i had watched again the video of uh, wayne dyer talking about the uh, monarch butterflies and right after that um, you know, and uh, I started to think about that and I thought, wouldn't it be fun if I saw monarch butterflies? Because that adds to another sign from Wayne, you know, and so I kind of called out to him. I said, Wayne, if you're around and you're still looking out for me, send me some monarch butterflies. And I kid you not, within seconds, because um, so um, actually a few minutes later, I walked out my front door and started walking and literally a monarch butterfly, a big one in that golden orange color flew right by my face, like making sure I didn't miss it and then hovered around. And I was like, thank you, Wayne. And it was like literally minutes after I had said that. So um, they're always around us. I can see from Danny's face that there are more. Yes, he's smiling. He's like his eyes are wide like these are some incredible stories go for it let's go for a few more ah cat says i have been having a very challenging life i keep seeing 1 11 p.m or a.m is this someone talking to me yes i think it is someone talking to you definitely they're asking you to listen now here's um, a bit of a catch-22 you cat you say that you have a very challenging life what happens is when we have a challenging life it keeps us sucked in the challenge keeps us sucked into the drama of the challenge which means that we are feeling emotionally drained we are feeling in stress we are feeling in fear or we're feeling in anger or we're involved in other people's drama this is not the most conducive state to be in to get messages and this is the state in which most people are always saying to me why am i not getting messages why is it that i keep asking for it and i'm not getting it 
if you are demanding the messages and you've got your teeth clenched and you're like, why am I not getting it? It's a very difficult state for which the message is to come through. So, um, and I'm not saying that's how you are, Kat. This is a generalization because when you say you're going through challenging times, this is immediately what I feel is that your involvement, your mental involvement in the challenge is what is preventing you from receiving the actual message. Your being able to see the 111 is a clue that somebody is trying to communicate with you. And so it's a clue that you need to find the space in your mind and in your heart to open up to the message. How do we do that? Like I said in the beginning, we can do that by just taking some time out, breathing. Breathing is a good one. Um, you can do that by even clearing some of the toxins in your, in your diet if you're eating a lot of junk food and fast food. Um, and you can do that by just spending some time alone, going by the ocean, going into nature, doing absolutely nothing, or doing something, something that doesn't occupy your left brain, which is like a hobby. You know, it's like when you're doing something where you don't even remember what time it is and you can get so involved in doing it and it feels like such a pleasure, that sort of thing is good. Messages can come to you during that time. So if you're playing, if, you're, um, if you've got art or if you're creative in some way, writer, you write poetry, music, anything like that, so you need to spend time doing things like that. Take yourself away from your challenges and your stresses. And it's important for you to do that, Kat. So thank you for that question. I'm sure it helped a lot of people. Do we have any more? Um, I can see Danny reaching for another one. Sharon asks, Anita, what does it mean when I see white orbs right outside my line of, my line of vision? It's happened twice. These are probably your guides, your angels, your spirit guides trying to, um, trying to communicate with, just trying to let you know they're there. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes they, don't, they may not have anything specific to say because you're all right. You're doing well, but they just want you to know that they're there. I sometimes see movement from the corner of my eye. And then when I turn, there's nothing there. But there was definite movement, something, a shadow, something moving. So I always take it that they're there to let me know that they're there. Just, they're just letting me know that, hey, I'm here. I haven't forgotten you. I haven't forsaken you. It's, it's all a good thing. Um, so if there are any more questions, I'll take a couple more questions because then I want to go into a couple of other things. Um, Danny says there are more, so that's always a great sign. Judy says, hi, Judy. I remember you from 1440. My mother-in-law passed a few weeks before my birthday. The week of my birthday, a Mylar balloon said, happy birthday, <laughs> floated by me as I got out of my car. <laughs> That's definitely your mom. She somehow manipulated it so that, um, so that the balloon kind of drifted your way or so that you found a parking spot right in the path of the balloon. She kind of guided you to go that way. That was definitely your mom. I love it when things like that happen. I just love it. Um, so thank you for that story. And we still have one more. Oh, nice. I like it. I like it. And we go to Sabrina. I was at a friend's wedding whose mum had passed. She asked for a sign that her mum was present. And during the ceremony, a phone went off. Turns out it was the vicar's. She said she knew it was her mum who made that happen as she would have found it funny. Oh my gosh, I totally believe that. That is, you know, I've, there's another story very similar and I shared this one before, but it's worth sharing it again. A friend of mine, her name is Linda, her son had passed away and um, she used to Skype her son frequently because they lived in different cities and she still had um, not like deleted his Skype from, from her um, Skype menu and her computer was on on her, on her son's birthday 
and it was morning and she was just lying in bed kind of feeling sad and reminiscing and thinking about him and thinking how this was his birthday and suddenly the Skype ring went off on her computer and she sat up to see who it was thinking it was another family member like a sister or somebody a sibling or someone but when she looked at the Skype um, at the Skype window it was her son's account and it was her son's photo it was as if he was calling her and so she was like shocked and when she clicked on it though it was her sister but somehow there was a glitch in Skype that caused his account and his picture to appear as though he was calling. She knew that he had somehow manipulated that because it's not something that just happens. So I find that they're really good at manipulating technology. That's something that they can actually do because I find with technology, weird things happen. I know friends who've had, um, who've, whose phones have typed messages. It's as though the keys are pressing themselves. One of my friends whose dad passed away, she had that happen to her, um, which was really weird and freaky, but um, she, she actually saw it happening before her eyes. So, so it's, it's quite incredible how they, can use, um, how they can use technology. And the other thing I want to point out here is that if it scares you, they won't do it because they love you. They're not going to do things that scare you. They're going to do it if it brings you comfort not if it scares you. So if something like that scares you, it won't happen. Um, so I'm going to turn to Boo. Do we have any more? In fact, okay, so um, I want to touch on a couple of other things. So last week, um, one of the questions I got, I received, was about infidelity and how to handle infidelity. And I just wanted to really quick touch on that again because because I received an email, a very beautiful, thoughtful email, where one person asked whether the way I, f I framed it was blaming the victim. And so I just wanted to clarify, uh, and I'm very happy she brought it up, because one of the things that I would never want to do and never do deliberately is to blame the victim. And so if you haven't seen last week's video, please go and watch it. But it was just a very tiny part of last week's video. Last week's video was focused on relationships. And I only spoke a couple of minutes on infidelity um, because it's not something I speak about a lot because I don't have experience, direct experience with it. However, um, one of the things that I was trying to convey, which may have been misconstrued, so I just want to clarify that, is that my take is that when somebody is a victim, um, I like to draw them out of victimhood so that they take responsibility of their healing, of moving their healing so that they can move forward um, and so that they can then go into a position of power so that they are no longer a victim. Because one of the things about being a victim is that when you are in victimhood, you feel that life is beyond your control. You feel that life is happening to you when you are stuck in victimhood. Um, so when someone feels like a victim, I like them to take responsibility for their own state of being and bringing themselves into a position of power to know that they have choices of how to handle the situation and move forward. So I wanted to be clear that when I ask people to take responsibility for their life moving forward, I am not saying it is their fault that this happened to them. It is not their fault. The, um, they are not, um, I am not blaming the victim for having the, whatever happened to them, but I am inviting people to take responsibility of getting into their own power because the person who victimized them is certainly not going to do it for them. And as long as you stay in that place of feeling like the victim, um, you will allow people to continue to have power over you. It's very important for you to be able to see your role uh, in, in people having power over you, but again, Again, I stress this over and over. I cannot stress this enough. I never blame the victim, but this is so that you can be in a position of power so that you can see that I was not a victim. 
I was abused, I was exploited, and I have the power to walk away from this situation. So I just wanted to make that clarity, and I'm so grateful for the person bringing it to my attention. I really appreciate your loving email because I would never want anyone to get the wrong impression. Um, and my take is always to move people into positions of power. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, and, if, uh, and so now I would just like to finish off by saying that um, I will be taking uh, the month of August as a hiatus from doing these Sunday Facebook Lives, but I will be dropping in sporadically during the weekdays just to keep you updated on things that are going on. We will be back in September for the regular um, Sunday Facebook Lives, but let me tell you what's happening in August because I want you to feel excited together with me. Um, number one is we are building an online platform. Um, because it's too soon for me to build physical brick and mortar healing sanctuaries, we want to start with an online platform, which will not just be focused on healing, but it'll be focused on many things, including abundance, um, health, um, relationships, well-being, like all kinds of stuff. It'll be a safe cocoon for us to, uh, to speak about topics that could be even provocative. So we are excited about building that and I may pop in from time to time to let you know how it's going. Uh, that's number one. Number two, anytime I'm excited about um, meeting somebody who I think could be very helpful for you, chances are I will bring them on uh, at some point during the weekdays over the next four weeks on a Facebook Live just to share their, just to share their wisdom with you. Uh, so you will be seeing me from time to time. The other thing I wanted to mention is that I will be also taking this time out to finish writing, finish up my book. Uh, my book, which is mainly written for empaths, but, uh, but it speaks about many things, including being sensitive, also how it relates to health and well-being and how it relates, like usually empaths struggle with making money and so on. So uh, I will be finishing up this book. I will at some point probably be asking your help on voting for title ideas because we have a few ideas, but we are kind of stuck as to which title to go with. Um, so that's the number other thing I'll be working on. Um, and also the third thing I'll be working on, which starts at the end of August, uh, is um, because my online course with the Shift Network uh, seems to do really well and I'm so grateful for you all for joining it. Um, by the time I really, uh, by the time it was over, I felt like I, I just got going. I was like really rolling. So they have invited me to do a second course with them for anybody who wants to go deeper into the subject, into um, some of the subjects that I covered in the first one. So I will be working on that over the next couple of weeks and that will be launched right at the end of August. And you can find all these things online on my Facebook page um, and so on. But the other, yet another thing I'm really excited about is that in September, I will be doing, uh, I'll be doing an event in Los Angeles. It's a full weekend event. Um, I'll be doing it together with Michael Neal, my dear friend Michael. Uh, Michael is a wonderful and articulate coach who really brings out um, a very deep part of um, my near-death experience, which, uh, which usually he brings out things that it doesn't occur to me to talk about. So he is a great person to do this with because we will be having tools for you to uplift your life because, and we've entitled this, um, this weekend workshop, Get Out of Jail Free Card for Your Life. And it's basically about finding freedom and feeling more uplifted. And it is in LA on the 21st and 22nd of September. And there is also a live stream option available if you would like, but I would love it if you could join me if you, if you live in the LA area. And I have more events coming up later this year, but you can check them out on my website. I'll be in at the Omega Center, I'll be in Sedona, um, I'll also be in New Mexico. You can check them out on my website. But I am so excited for all the things that are coming up and I wouldn't be able to do them without all of you. I am so grateful for all, for all of you. Thank you so much for everything. And, in, and also, if you want more information on any of these things, 
And also, I love to hear from you. Uh, please sign up to my newsletter on my website. And on my newsletter, like a lot of you say that um, you, you don't always know when I've put out a video or you're not always on Facebook. So please sign up to my newsletter because you will get all the information on my upcoming platform. Um, on other other coaches, helpers, whatever it is I have, you'll be getting it on my newsletter. So thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you, truly love all of you. Thank you again. And I am looking forward to reading more comments of your psychic phenomena. One last thing, when we come back in uh, September, we're going to do lives on YouTube as well, not just Facebook, but you, we're going to experiment with doing them on YouTube as well. Yay! So I know <laughs> Danny's a big fan of YouTube. So yay. Can't wait to see you all. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to my video. And if you really enjoyed it, I would love for you to subscribe. And the subscribe button is here. And also I would love for you to watch my suggested video, which is over here. And if you love my content, please feel free to share it to people who you think that would benefit from it. Thank you.